do. Yo, 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 what it is, what it does, what it was, or whatever. I'm here for someone, somewhere, somehow to help them out, get through the creative constraints of creating stuff. That person that wants to know how to light and use their composition to make everything look bright and all right. So you don't have to go through the mental cascade that I had to go through to get where I am trying to help that individual. Anyways, I'm shooting today. I'm showing today this documentary that I did with my man, Alex Acosta. Shout out to him at Prestige Films. We did this documentary in Virginia, one of the places where slaves used to live. And to be able to go over there and shoot and be a part of the history of it was pretty, pretty cool. And yeah, man, this is how we went about it. And I'm going to tell you the safe route, the crazy route, and some of the things that we went through and stuff to look out for when you're starting to do outside shoots. All right. So I'm just going to show you the different elements of what we went through for this because it looks like everything was fine and dandy, but it was pretty crazy at first. So I'm going to start out with my guy here. Um... So these are great accidents and you look forward to them when you start to become a better cinematographer, your eye starts to see them. So what we're looking at here, now first and foremost, this guy's eyes are wide open. Well, not necessarily wide open, but I guess that's, his, that's the threshold of openness that he has within his eyes. All right, so this is what I'm trying to say. His ability to open his eyes that much, you really, really had to pay attention to. That means we're diminishing the sun a lot more where he's being located in the scene. Because as you see in the background, how the sun is hitting that brick wall, it is blasting it like crazy. So at this point, the point of control is making sure the back brick wall is not overexposed so we don't lose all that information so you can still see the separation within the cracks within the details that come between this brick wall one of the hardest things that you have to go through when you're shooting outside is time and if you don't have time on your side that's when your fundamentals come into play you can only have fun when you have your fundamentals. Why am I saying that? When you're crunched for time, people are being late, stuff is not working out as you planned, you were supposed to get here at this time because the sun was going to be located at this position, and since you're like three hours behind, so this is what we basically had to do. So the reason why I say your fundamentals are really, really important is because of the fact that when your back is against the wall, if you know your systems, your systems will always work. If I know what to do at every scenario just to make it look okay, because your client doesn't care if you're creative or not. Your client doesn't care if you're going to make it look cool. Your client cares if you can create the product that they want. So at the end of the day, I know fundamentally inside of my soul what looks okay and passable. So since this was our first time on the first day, I knew that we're late, so we're gonna have to make this whole thing look soft. So we created a tent right over him. I think it was a 12 by 12 to diffuse the whole entire sun and that little sector that we are in. So that's why you see no elements of any shadows on his face right now. And you see later in the documentary, I start to get more creative. Why do I get more creative? Because I was on the field for a lot longer, so I have a lot more time. So this was the first day. And the second day, then we start to add a lot more elements so we can get down into that beautiness of cinematography and creating those frames and those shadows and those separations. But right here, I had to just put a whole tent right over him we call it a 12 by 12 overhead. So we're just, we're just blasting him with a whole bunch of soft light. I didn't even have time to put a neg on the side of it to try to create any type of interesting shadows on his skin. The only thing that we were lucky, we opened the door to add a little darkness on the side. We actually should have put a light inside of there to try to mimic some type of luminance. It just looks like the void. It looks like you're about to walk into the supernatural. But you can see how the door is overexposed. But we're not overexposed on the sensor. But your eyes look like it's really, really bright there. 
this brick was really, really cool because all those elements there. And this, you see this branch of this tree? This just adds another dimension of this wall. So again, we're just adding interest. So this is still considered fabulous shot on my hat on my part because I understand the fundamental. If I have the fundamentals, then I have a foundation. If I have a foundation, then you can have fun. So understand how to deconstruct your shoots. If everything goes wrong and everything goes crazy and you're dealing with chaos, you always go back to your fundamentals. In my head, unconsciously, I always know I can walk it in the dark and tell people where to put different stands just by talking to them because I just understand it because I've just done it so much. So adding soft light all over the frame usually works. It's technically speaking, it's usually flat when you're just putting consistent light all over the place on one thing, on one subject. But look, again, like I tell you, clothing is very, very important. He has, he doesn't have bright clothing, his darker clothing compared to his skin, this brick wall, this dark little shadow at the end. All those elements create cool frames. Think about that as we proceed. Um, yeah, so building this structure was hard. It was extremely, extremely windy day. And we had to do a lot just to keep our overhead consistent and not fly away. Again, she's the first day we had to light her. We had to position her with just sun and filtration. Sun and filtration. Sun and filtration. And that's why you really don't see different elements in her skin. But anyways, like I told you, I had to get the client what they needed. This fence was probably not the most beautiful thing, but they put this fence up when we did our scalp. It wasn't there. When we came back, it was. And these are the things you have to deal with and you have to instantly get under control and understand it. So put it in position. Make sure you don't put the fence behind her head because then it starts looking crazy. Again, so we persistent her right in front of the dark door, the, the dark door of voidness that I talked about earlier. I didn't like that. So put her head right there. It makes it look a little bit better because it's dark to light. Dark to light, dark. She's light skinned. She has dark on her. We have the um, the brick wall, of course, and this overhead is cost casting this consistent soft light. Now it's not as bright as earlier because the time changed. I think we're around two o'clock right now. So boom, yeah. So we actually went inside the the little house where the slaves used to live in this part of the shoot. Again, she didn't feel comfortable staying outside because it was real windy. It was getting really, really cold. So, so we had to decide to put her on the inside and we wanted to create different elements for every interview. So even here, we had a very, very, very small amount of time because she wanted to leave and it was getting cold and she was uncomfortable. So we had to set up a scene as quick as possible. Again, my elements here are not the greatest. This is a flat shot. I'm being, I'm being overly critical because I could still see the elements that I tried to create, but ultimately I'm shooting on the same side as the light, which causes this side of her face to be brighter than the other side of the face. But we can still see the separation between the lighter side and the darker side of her face, but there's this consistent lighting all across the board. And that same light is hitting this wall behind her. Greatly, we have different textures of the brick wall that's breaking down and this wood wall behind her head. Greatly, she was wearing a black clothing, which helped separate her. But ultimately, these colors are so, so similar from her skin to the wall, to the brick, to the wood. They're so close that I would probably say this is more flatter than regular, but we still have a little bit of separation because I have light coming on the right side of her face and a different light coming up from her left side of her face. I think I'm using the Polaroid right here to blast right here. And I have a tube light over top that's shining back on her just to separate her from this brick wall. As you can see it hitting her top of her head right here. Last shot. 
All right, now I can get back into my game. I can get back into my sauce. Why? Because this is the second day. I have more time. I know what elements I need to deal with. So my fundamentals have been checkmarked. My foundation has been checkmarked. Now it's time to have fun, be fantabulous. This is the framework, guys. Shooting the dark side of her face. Make sure I have an eye light. Make sure I place her head to a place on the background that doesn't cause too much distraction. So where I'm gonna put her head? Where it's darkest, right in between there. I could have put a light back there just to bring it up a little bit, but we chose not to because we wanted to cause different layers. So one layer is this brick. Second layer is the black voidness. Third, third layer is her lighter side of her face. Fourth layer is the dark side of her face. What I did here, we use natural light here. So there was a big, big, no, it was just a door. Remember that door that was I was showing you earlier? that had the dark void in the first interview. Yeah, that door right there. So at the time that we shot it, the light was just shining straight through it. So what I did was, just to create that look, I think we had the same look for everybody that was inside there at that point. Um, yeah, we had the same look for everybody that was that inside there at that part. I just put a big fabric right in front of the door so the sun blasts through the door, through the fabric, hit this person. Now, on the closer scene, we see more separation, but we still have the dark side of his face, the light side of his face, the light side of this wall. The light side of this wall is darker than this side of his face, so we go dark, we go dark side of the face, light side of the face, light side of the face slash dark side of the space, light side of the wall, dark side of the wall, lighter side of the wall. Again, layers, 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 layers. But yeah, that's the framework guys, always think about it. Like I said earlier, if you have your fundamentals, you then have a foundation and then you create the aspect and the opportunities to have more fun. So yeah, man, that was great. This is me, just in case you guys didn't think I was there, that I really did the shoot. That is I, and I am him, and he is me. It's Alex, my man Luke, and my man Hennick. Yeah. What else do they have for the BTS? That's me again. Yeah, we didn't even use all this. Like That's the frame that I was talking about that we had to put over the top of these people because of because of the sun was crazy clearly you see it was cold out there we didn't use any of the, we didn't use any of these you see the light on the stand i think it was a 600 we didn't have time this was interesting um so let me just say this real quick this this little bts photo we wanted to put more light on her because once we put the overhead on top of her, it decreases the light so much that the light that was hitting the brick was overly exposed. So the only way we were gonna get her exposed is by brightening her up. So we can then get closer to where the brick was because that overhead probably shuts down the sun almost 12 decibels. So at that point, she was just too dark compared to what the sun was doing to this brick. Now, if there was no brick wall, we would have got away with it. But since the brick wall was right next to her, behind her, it was causing all the intention to go to the brick wall because it was so bright. So what we had to do is put a Fresnel on a 600D, which then focuses the light so we can up her exposure so then we can adjust the light to her skin and put it at a same level as what the sun was hitting on the background so therefore she can be properly exposed how was i able to do this because i understand my fundamentals so then i have a foundation then i can have some fun so that was a fun adjustment there but again just to make it more simple since the sun was so bright and hitting the wall that we could not control. We had to put up the light on the subject 
that is in front of the frame to match the wall or to get closer to the wall so she can be properly exposed because of the structure, the 12 by 12 that we put over top that was controlling the scene. So yeah, so this is how you kind of go about those things. Shooting outside is always crazy because you never know what you got to deal with, but understand your fundamentals and you'll be okay. Until next time, it'll be next time. See you next time.